Hi, my name is Jennifer Stay, and you've come to this video to watch me draw a giant mandala. It's Mandala May, and I want to celebrate by creating a giant mandala to go on the back wall of my art studio here. I'm so excited to do this, so let's get started. Okay, I have some supplies here in front of me to help me get started to make this giant mandala. Now, if you'd like to try drawing mandalas at home, I have tools, free tools for you to make mandalas at home. I'm going to be using one of them right here today to help me draw this giant mandala. But if you want to draw a more manageable size mandala at home, I have a tool with a whole video all describing how to create your own mandalas. So there are links to that video and links to this two page downloadable free tool all in the video description that you can come and download it and start creating your own mandalas. Now you can also download uh, some mandalas to color and purchase a mandala coloring book over on my website. So check out all those links if you're looking for some fun mandalas to color. But today I'm going to be working on creating a giant mandala and for that I've got some big paper here. This is some Canson XL watercolor paper that I have stashed here in my art studio. It's 18 inches by 24 inches. This is giant paper. It's going to be perfect for this project. A little unwieldy to work with but it should be lots of fun. So this is the paper I have chosen to work Work with. In addition to this, we're going to be using some pencils to do the uh, the beginning of the mandala, the sketch work. So I'm just going to use a good old number two pencil. I've got some erasers. I've got some giant rulers to help me, and a few other tools that I'll show you along the way. Any links that I can give you to all these products will be in the video description. So let's start by pulling a piece of paper out of this giant pad as carefully as I can so we don't damage the paper. Okay, the next thing we need to do is find the center of this paper. For that, I've got a big yardstick to help me find the center. And we're going to need a pencil. Um, these are my favorite number two inexpensive pencils. I always pick up a box of these when it's back to school. Um, so I'll put a link to these in the video description in case you're curious about them. I'm going to sharpen it up using my Carl sharpener here, but I'm going to do it off of the paper so that we don't get any dust or scratches on my big piece of paper here. Okay, so to find the center, we're going to line up um, all four corners and draw lines through them to get a giant X as close as possible. Okay, so you can see my X in the middle here, so we know where the center of the paper is. So the first thing you need to do when you draw a mandala is to create a grid like this so that you can place your shapes and create your design on your mandala. So like I said, you can download this tool if you want to draw your own mandala. And I have done all the work for you by creating this tool for you, but I have to create this grid for myself on this page. So I've found the center point and now I've got a few tools that I can use to help me create my own grid. This is one that I recommend right here. It's by Helix and it helps me create circles. So we're going to start with this little guy here and I've got one already open right here. They tend to break a little bit but they're inexpensive so I am not too angry at them when they do break. This is another one of my favorite rulers right here. And this one is nice and flexible and clear and has lots of different kinds of marks and measurements on it. So it's very um, handy and valuable to me as an artist. Now we can take this and line up a few of the marks. Let me zoom down so you can see what I'm lining up. We're going to line up the center point 
the zero degree, the 180 degree, the 90 degree, and the 270 degree on my circle. Good. And then brace it down and we can start drawing our first of our circular grid. Let's do a little one in the middle. One on the outside. Okay, then I'm going to make a tick at every 30 degree spot. So at 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 210, 240, 270 is already there, 300, and 330. Okay. Now we can use, let's see, let's use the big ruler again. And connect these lines to create some more rays on our grid. Now we have a couple extra rays that we created in the beginning to find at the center of our paper. We're going to erase those. Okay, now we want some more rings on our um, grid here. So I'm gonna bring out another tool and that's this one right here. And it's a good old compass. I keep it in this little case because it is so sharp, it has a needle point on this end right here and an actual lead in here for drawing the line. And you spin this right here to open it up and I can make um, measurements on here anywhere I want. This opens up really nice and wide. So now it's a matter of deciding where I want each ring. So I can take my ruler and make a mark everywhere that I want an additional ring. So maybe it's every one inch. Let me make a mark every one inch. Like that. Going to open this up and see how far we can make this tool work. I think I got it a little too far open. So you set this in the center and get it till this touches right where your mark is that and then you can draw your circle okay keep it in the center and just open it up to the next mark I think it has reached its limit. So we'll just do to there. Not too shabby, we got a couple extra rings drawn. It's looking good. I'm going to close this up and put it away.
Okay, to get the outer circles, I've taken, um, these are just some really small tweezers, and I'm going to hold a loop of a thread. I don't know if you can even see that I have some thread here in my hands, but wish I could have found some darker thread for you, but got the thread looped at one end, I'm going to hold it. And then I've taped the thread to my pencil with some washi tape at the right length. And I'm going to hold it and just go around, hold it taut, and go around and draw my other rings this way. Of course, my desk is starting to show that it has a lack of room for such a big project. Okay, that's looking good. Now, one thing I don't like is um, as these rays expand and get wider out towards these outer rings, there's a lot of space here and it's going to make drawing elements out here more difficult. So I want to create more rays. So that's going to be this tool's job. So let's create more rays. Okay, I'm also adding a couple straight lines here on the ends, the long ends of the page to help me at the end when I do the borders of the mandala. So that will be something at the end that you'll see me use. And as you can see, it's taken me quite a long time just to get the grid system laid out for the mandala. And that's why this tool that I'm providing for you uh, for free over on my website is so awesome that you can come and get this. And all the work that I just did on this large scale is already done for you. So come and get it. Take advantage of my work because it's all done and ready for you. Okay, let's take a good look at what we have finished here. Um, it's a little, it's not perfect. Nothing is perfect here because of the tools we used and um, that's all right. I, I'm pretty proud of how it turned out and I'm excited now to do the fun part, which is filling in the fun details. So the question always comes up, what do I put on my mandala? How do I fill up this grid now that I have it? And I have the perfect thing for you also with this downloadable tool. And that's the second page on the tool. And that's all these fun shapes. Basically, they're ideas to get you started and get your creative ideas rolling for drawing a mandala. So what I'm going to do is use these shapes and put them onto my mandala. And they're just some fun ideas, shapes based on circles, triangles, squares, just some more abstract shapes and reminding you to stretch them, combine them, and have fun with the shapes on your mandala. So these are the shapes I'm going to apply to my large larger scale mandala for my wall. So let's sit back, hit the fast forward, and you can enjoy watching the mandala fill out. I'm just going to use my pencil and of course my eraser and fill in the shapes on my mandala.
Okay, I think I've got the main mandala drawn now, and wow, that took a lot of time, but I'm excited about it. It's looking really good, and I think it's going to look fantastic back here on my wall. Now I want to work on taking some of the shapes that I created in the mandala and putting them into the border on the sides of the mandala. That I think will bring the whole thing together. So let's work on the borders. Okay, I like what we have laid out here. Now I've left lots of space so that as I'm inking, I can add more details if I want to. Um, I like how there's moments of big empty areas and then moments of lots of little details. That will help when I come to the time of coloring because that will give me a moment to do some blending or add some bling, whatever I want to do at the coloring stage. I also like what I did with the borders. I feel like they are uh, taking the eye out. They're sort of pointing these, these elements out here, sort of point the eye out. Now over here, I lined up all the points out to the actual um, reference line. And over here, I was just freehanding it. So when I do my inking, I'll actually bring these lines all the way out to the reference line. So. Definitely did a lot of erasing, um, so a good eraser is a really good idea. That's one reason I really like these pencils. They have a really good eraser on the end, so that's one great thing about these pencils. So now we move on to the inking stage, and for that, I've got lots of Sharpies here handy, both the fine point and the ultra fine point, so we can do a little line variance. I picked the Sharpies because they are a permanent marker, and I will be able to do some watercolor type paint, or my alcohol markers, or my gel pens, or color pencils, whatever color I want on top of this. Now I will be coloring this on another um, video, not in this video, we're just going to be doing the inking stage and then we'll erase all of the um, sketching lines and see how it looks. So let's get into inking and see how it goes. I think I'm gonna start with the fine point, which is a little bit of a bigger tip. Um, give me a little thicker of a line and then we can do some of the detail points, so the detail lines with the um, ultra fine point Sharpie. So that's my plan, let's see how it goes. Okay, I'm adding the final finishing touches here to the mandala. 
I will probably end up adding more finishing touches um, when I get to the coloring stage. And if you'd like me to, if you'd like to see me color this mandala, make sure you've subscribed and hit that notification bell because that is coming up in a future video. So watch for that video to come. I cannot wait to add color to this mandala. I'm very happy with how it turned out. And if you'd like to try drawing your own mandala, make sure you check out that free tool that I have for you over on my website. And yes, there it is, my giant mandala. Also, you may have seen little Bessie here. She is my little dust vacuum, and she came in really handy as I was erasing all the sketch lines here, and I'm sure I'm going to keep finding additional sketch lines that I missed erasing. Um, I tend to miss lines and have to catch them later. So she's a cute little dust buster that I use here in my art studio. I'll put a link to her as well. She comes in handy when I'm using soft pastels and also eraser dust. She's great for that. Thanks, Betsy. I can't wait to hang it up and have it all full colored and I'm going to add bling with some gel pens and I have some pretty neat inks that are iridescent so we'll have to maybe add some of that in here too. So make sure you join me for that video. I can't wait to hang it up. Hopefully this inspired you to create one of your own mandalas. So I hope you have a wonderful and inspirational mandala May. We'll see you. Bye bye.